David Suzuki? Oh, hi, Bob. Just changing this wasteful bulb with something more modern and efficient. What's one light bulb going to do? Be efficient. What Americans need are the right tools to make good decisions about how they can improve the climate. Um, so what we try to do at Energy Star is provide one simple label. All they have to do is look for the mark. They know they're getting a more energy efficient product. That'll have a positive impact on their pocketbook as well as on the environment. Efficiency in its various forms and guises uh, represent the biggest uh, uh, set of opportunities. Can efficiency help reduce our ecological footprint? Suppose we have two fuel sources, X and Y. Y produces twice as much energy per unit and emits far fewer toxins such as sulfur and mercury, and even less carbon dioxide. We would need twice the quantity of X to produce the same amount of energy as Y. Think about it for a moment. Which one is better for the environment? The more efficient fuel or the polluting and efficient fuel? In this example, it is the turn of the 20th century. Petroleum is fast replacing coal as the predominant fuel source. It is twice as efficient and emits far fewer toxins to the ecology. Based on our definition of green being more efficient and cleaner, petroleum should have been a green miracle. But as we are well aware, it wasn't. Why? We certainly did become more efficient. More efficient at shipping, mining, building roads, highways, going on vacation, and building bigger cities. The problem was not so much that the fuel was more efficient, but it was making us more efficient. The energy efficiency of petroleum translates to a massive labor efficiency. The more efficient we become, the more we can produce and consume with less labor. The result is that there's a potential labor surplus. This labor surplus has both a push and a pull impetus to the economy. The pull is that it facilitates more growth. There are more people now who have the time to invent new products, build and implement them. New industries can be created. The push is that if we do not produce and consume more, the economy is faced with rising unemployment and a potential recession. Intuitively, we think that being more efficient will help us reduce our ecological footprint. But once we factor in the economy, the relationship is the exact opposite. The more efficient we become, the bigger our ecological footprint gets. The goal is to set one national standard that will rapidly increase fuel efficiency. Efficiency in its various forms and guises. Half of our 80% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 could come from efficiency. So this is a winning proposition for folks looking to buy a car. The relationship between efficiency and sustainability can create for some rather unintuitive results. Which of these would you say is better for the ecology? A small little efficient smart car or a big ugly SUV? For most, the answer is of course it's a small little smart car. It uses way less resources. But again, the problem is that once you factor in the economy, the relationship between efficiency and sustainability becomes the exact opposite to what you would have expected. The small car is way more efficient. Fewer resources are used in its manufacture and it uses way less fuel. Consequently, fewer people are employed for resource acquisition, construction and running of the automobile. This efficiency puts a mandate on the economy. 
either accept rising unemployment, which is not a particular popular option, or grow the economy with increasing amounts of consumerism. The increase in consumerism can come from wherever. 3D television sets, bigger houses, or maybe even the five-car household. An example of this phenomenon is the 1973 CAFE standard. In an attempt to reduce energy consumption, the American Congress passed the Energy Conservation Act, which mandated a 25% increase in engine efficiency. However, despite engines becoming more efficient, the consumption of energy increased by 9% by 1990. Here's another way we can look at the same effect. Suppose that I own a Hummer and I'm feeling guilty and want to reduce my ecological footprint. So what I do is I get rid of the Hummer and I get myself a small little efficient car. Will that reduce my ecological footprint? Perhaps. But in most cases, if my income doesn't decrease, my ecological footprint will either stay the same or increase. You see, that Hummer, it costs a lot in resources and labor, from manufacturing to fuel and all the steel that goes into its construction. Whereas the small little fishing car, it'll get me to work and pretty much do everything that I need a lot more efficiently with a lot less cost. Let's assume that I'm saving around two to three hundred dollars. You see, here's the problem. You see, if I spend that money, if I spend it on a European vacation or a bigger home or a new computer or a new camera or a sofa or whatever, all of those things add to my ecological footprint. Even if I spend it on a massage and the masseuse then goes and spends it on a European vacation, it all adds up, even if it goes into the bank. The bank will lend it to a corporation or somebody or some business that also increases that ecological consequence. The consequence is that our ecological footprint, just as it has in the past, continues to get bigger. It is not just fuel and cars. Any efficiency which results in a labor efficiency will all have the same effect. More efficient computer software, or even civic design, can be just as deadly to the ecology as more efficient fuel. Evidence of this can be seen across the world. Cities with higher density and more efficient public transportation systems generally have higher per capita ecological costs than those that don't. A good example of this is Manhattan. It has one of the most efficient public transportation systems in North America and one of the highest density rates. Yet, it also has the highest per capita ecological cost in North America. So what are the solutions to dealing with our ecological crisis? If efficiency means we can produce more with less labor, then one solution is reduce the work week. Cash in these efficiency gains in terms of more leisure time. This country is changing. We had a 58-hour week, a 48-hour week, a 40-hour week. As machines take more and more of the jobs of men, we're going to find the work week reduced. Another solution is counterbalancing the efficiency gains with labor inefficiencies that also improve our quality of life. There are many ways this can be done. More healthcare workers for a set number of patients. More teachers for a set number of pupils. Instead of more efficiently filling landfills with products that we do not really need, let's challenge these efficiency gains in opportunities for creating a healthier, happier and wiser population. Ecological sustainability is not about becoming more efficient. That is what we've been doing. It does not work. It is about using the efficiencies that already exist in the economy and channeling them to improving the quality of our lives. <laughs>